Hi, my name is Hatazi and I'm a pro gamer, also a game developer. Currently I have the first game I made on Steam, but right now I'm here to talk to you about the future of Apex Legends. Please respond, hear me out. Sissel, Sissel! Go, in the smoke! Oh, 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 oh. So, first of all, why should you listen to me? Well, let me credit myself first. I've played and finished tons of games in the course of my life. Playing games, making games, analyzing and debugging games is my job. It's what I do. From MMORPGs to TPS, FPS, and all of it. I started playing for real around 9 years old with Counter-Strike Condition Zero. Then played Rank and Halo 2 and 3. I have looked around Wolf Team, Soldier Front, and all those answer respawn came with Titanfall. A perfect balance between teamwork, fast-paced skills, and shooting war tactic. Right now, I'm currently playing on a serious level, Rainbow Six Siege, Titanfall 2, and Apex Legends on a regular when time is given to me, of course. Respawn took care of the Titanfall 2 community like no one else ever did for a game. During two years, they listened to us and worked the best out of it. That's why I trust them. But I'm here today to share with you, through my gaming experience, what Apex Legends should maybe try to consider and break this game to a higher balance level. I talk to people and everybody in the Apex community. Most do think that some characters are even necessary to pick when it comes to high competitive level. I get what you're trying to do, Respawn. Don't get me wrong, I am in the industry and this is why I think my ideas will be beneficial to you. I've looked around the internet and maybe seen and heard all type of buffs, but most of them doesn't even understand the work that need to be put on or acknowledge your vision. I don't think characters need to be reworked because it's part of who they are, but instead work a way around for improvement. And I'm begging you not to nerf Pathfinder, Gibby, Watson or Wraith. No just yet. They are perfectly balanced in my opinion. People complain because they refuse to accept the changes when they are playing against them. For example, Watson is a great asset to a team based, but alone on the move, she's nothing and that's why she's great. There are many great buffs ideas, but my buff ideas are in the sole purpose of balancing the team based play level, giving every character the chance to be an asset to the team and get picked because they are affecting the meta of the game. The best way to affect the meta of the game is by giving each character a direct interaction between their teammates and their character's unique ability. Your squad should be able to benefit from your legend in a unique way, period. Pay attention as I have really good and realistic buffs. Some can be stacked up with others, some not, as there will be to OB. Octane. Octane's jump pad is not useless but can easily lead your teammate to a sudden death. Jumping high in the air from a predictable angle is nonsense. Don't get me wrong, I'm from Titanfall 2 PC. Yo, we got aim, we'll hit you straight in the air. We are used to that. It's a punishment for us, like Street Fighter Shayuken. Smokey Sniper came up with a clever idea, but part of the problem still exists. I understand that it fits with the character rushing to a fight. And this is exactly what I said earlier work a way around for improvement. Buff number one. Jump patch give an extra boosted shield of 50 to 100 hit point in the air for whoever jumping on it. This way it doesn't punishes you from using an ultimate that should be used in the first place, encourages you and your teammate to rush into a fight, changes the meta of the game when Octane's on board and fits with the character's personality. Buff number two. Jump patch should make bullet and granite bounce off with a direct angle and improve distance. This way it gives another usage to the ultimate, brings a new approach to a fight and changes the tactics of you. Buff number 3. Octane dragging teammate while reviving should grant them a speed boost for a few seconds. This way it can turn over a bad situation, gives the option to push or fight on the edge of the ring as an escape route is secured and makes him more valuable. Lifeline. Just like Bloodhound, she's a solid character that would have been more useful if the game's tempo wasn't so fast and shield based, and of course Gibby doesn't help her. 
Medkit isn't really an issue and healing slowly without having any mobility is what makes her unnecessary for a lot of realistic situations. She's stuck in the defender and support class. Let's make it clear. Buff number one. Give teammates an extra chunks of health when reviving. This way it distinguishes her from Gibby and Defender's ability, makes her more valuable when it comes to healing and doesn't have to waste her tactical as the cooldown is hurting when enemies are pushing. Buff number 2 Toggle her drone to follow her without healing or stop and start healing. This way healing doesn't become a curse as you can escape from a gunfight and start again. It makes her more useful when enemies are pushing and her tactical doesn't have a camping purpose. Buff number 3 Extra compartments should always have health and shield instead of attachments. This way it gives her unique ability to follow along with the game's tempo, marks her apart from Loba's support ability and future support legends. Buff number 4 A bit too much, but it's not that crazy. Ultimate comes faster, crashes or smashes the floor like a titan and pushes away and damaging enemies around, but slows down when allies are around can be casted on the roof when inside a building. This way it clears her role as a support as she can secure looting instead of only attracting attention, can also use to secure healing and scare enemies away, changes the game as her ultimate can be supported by a passive aggressive playstyle. Bangalore. Bangalore is one of the most solid and useful characters that suffers from the game's current meta. Useful to push, escaping and rotating, but her smoke att attract attention, creates chaos that aren't feared and sometimes even more painful. People aren't lost in the smoke since they can see teammates, map and pings. When popping smoke, enemies can simply get close, blast and throw bounce as you aren't more advantageous especially when you're low on health nearby and indoors. Buff number one, who's ever under smoke should not see allies, pings and most of the HUD. This way it creates delocalization, makes pushing through smoke scarier for enemies when you're escaping or moving, rotating. Going in the smoke becomes a wiser choice more than a let me see, uh, makes reviving teammate or finishing enemies much more clear and tactic based. Buff number two, Rolling Thunder should smoke the entire area. This way it ensures escaping route, rotating, makes her ultimate usage clear and not mixed with Gibby's ultimate intentions, makes Bangalore a more valuable asset to third parties, ring rotation, and changes the meta of the game forcing other legends to appear like Bloodhound for example. Buff number 3. Canis's explosion should slow enemies movement. On Canis's splits, the impact should push anyone 4 meters away from the opposite direction of the smoke. This way it makes escaping much more easier as intended, avoid Bangalore's from easily pushing enemies on close distance as the canister's explosion will push it back from the target negating spamming from this buff it also makes the smoke scarier and benefits the whole team as you can turn the situation buff number four seems a little bit too op but it's not that open when you think about it ability to mount a digital threat scope on all of some assault rifle like her favorite g7 scout this way it makes looting and support characters even more valuable towards bangalore making smoke tactics in bangalore is more useful and usable changes the camping game style into a more aggressive playstyle. just like old times bloodhound a solid character that would have been more useful if Watson wasn't changing the meta as she does and if Crypto's drone's ability to scan wasn't as useful as it is. Recon and Hunter, gathering intel is one of the most important aspects in Apex. Bloodhound provides us with great and direct intel but not enough to catch up with the game's current game style. Buff number one. Ability to ping tracks and ping enemies, traps, fences, and enemies' object as a one second scan. This way, it gives him the ability to visually communicate with allies, ping scans, can also give intel on what exactly is that enemy is doing, and distinguishes him from crypto once and for good. Direct intel is much more useful in high level. Buff number two, his scan should scan trap fences and enemies objects this way it gives him the ability to counter the game's meta as people are often camping not being able to see traps is just a deadlier trap to his tactical giving the ability to see the enemy set up directly buff number three Bloodhound sees crows flying high above the sky hovering bloody guns fight and can ping that location this way it makes his team aware of nearby fights making him a better hunter giving the choice to attack or not and locate himself better Buff number 4 seems a bit too much, but not that crazy. Scan enemies from the beacon area when using the beacon. 
Crypto and Pathfinder have much more mobility to access the beacon, so it makes Bloodhound a bit useless compared to them towards this aspect. So giving him that buff makes him more valuable towards beacon and exchange of his lack of mobility compared to them. I don't concern myself with the ambitions of insects. Caustic. He's already solid, but he needs a tiny little thing just to be more impactful to a team. People want steam, gas, immunity? Nope. His trap should affect your teammate vision. Please keep it that way. He's an independent variable and everyone else is just another test subject. Buff number one, larger gas trap. This way it makes him more useful to defend his steam and now that teammates can take cover with his gas traps, giving a tiny chance to, to him and his teammates to survive large fields. Buff number two, allies can push gas traps with a kick up to 5 meters. This way it makes defensive tactics more efficient with his team, teammate can interact with his gas to achieve much more results and aren't always blocked by, making him a more efficient player and able to switch the game style from a campaign to aggressive and vice versa. Buff number 3. Enemies living in a toxic area should have a 5 second gas trail that everyone can see. This way it creates much more option to tactics, teammate doesn't always have to be within the gas to be more efficient and creates room to passive aggressive playstyle as a camping or a defensive playstyle, makes gas carrier to approach and deal strategic consequences. Buff number 4. Not a bit too much but it goes. Shooting gas traps makes small toxic bullet explosion giving one damage to the enemy's shield. This way it makes pushing into the gas trap scarier, pushes enemies to take wiser decision, putting teammates in advantageous defensive position, affecting the shield so it is not too overpowered, and forcing the enemies to step back and shield regen. Mirage. People do complain a lot about Mirage. I've played a few times with him and every time I clutch with bamboozles. I mean Holo Pilot in Titanfall 2 is my main class and I'm a god with it. I don't use Mirage because he's a worse version of the holo pilot period not having to aim to clone is way more fluid and direct control over three holos is just perfect but hey i'm going to talk about how to make him useful and not more powerful but i won't give you any buff ideas since you guys already promised us a buff very soon all i have to say is it's easy for mirage to be op and make his clones having a better ai won't solve the problem if the team cannot interact with mirage's abilities Something like example ultimate makes nearby allies invisible is the type of buff we need, strategic and team interaction. For crypto and revenant, I think we should see with the new class abilities because they are pretty solid and definitely are changing the playstyle, but I'll state this before going for the sentinel. Revenant's climbing passive is a bit useless. There aren't a lot of places he can access that all the legends can't. And the climbing speed isn't as fast as it seems. It isn't that useful in a realistic apex situation. Sentinel's boosted shot seems a little bit useless in my opinion. No one wants to waste a shield battery to simply inflict 100 shield damage. A great way to buff the Sentinel and makes its boosted shots more useful in a realistic situation. Buff number one, one boosted shot to destroy Watson's ultimate. Buff number two, being able to shoot through Gibraltar's shields. Buff number three, one boosted shot to destroy any knockdown shield or ignore knockdown shield. Buff number four, one boosted shot to destroy any doors. And this will you'll change the meta of the game with the sentinel. A simple charge shot would scare people for real and not just take cover as the game usually doesn't end up in the intended situation. Weakening Gibby and Watson which are the two big meta changer is a game changer. Next is Wraith. Well to sum all of this. Watson is one of the characters who really affected the game. People complain about Apex becoming more of a camping game style, but I think we needed this to understand that the game is more tactical and team based. Being able to shut down Watson for example with the Sentinel and other legends ability is forcing the game to switch from a camping phase to an attack one and vice versa. Every time someone pick a character that changes the meta of the game, player aren't just forced to play differently but forced to pick other character to balance their chances of winning. If everyone brings something to the table that can easily weaken other legend, then now player will start picking all legends and in competitive you'll see a lot more legends and teams switching as they want to adapt because now they're all playing safe. 
if there are more Bangalores, there will be more Bloodhound, more Bloodhound, more Revenant, more Revenant, more Lifeline, you know. But it all goes down to the devs because any little changes can be overpowered and the devs have a vision of how they want the game to be. So I hope I was useful to you, Respound. Just another trying to help the game we love. Hopefully it will allot us. My name is Hotazi. Please send this message to Respound Devs. Hopefully you'll like my ideas. I believe this in this game, I hate Battle Royale, but you managed to bring all type of FPS players into one Battle Royale game. I choose you over Overwatch and Valorant, but I choose Titanfall 2 over you any time. It's a better game and I'm waiting for my Titanfall 3. Thank you. Thank you for supporting us. And yeah, keep streaming because we love to watch. <laughs>